As promised, welcome to part 2 of strange foods you can officially find on menus from all around the world. By the way, have you seen part 1 of this series? And like before, be warned that only looking at some of those dishes may take your appetite away. So let's dig in. Ten coxcombs. Chicken coxcombs, or rooster combs, so-called fleshy growth or crest, are used in cuisines of many parts of the world. They can be found in some parts of Asia where they are used in stews and soup broth. However, the dishes made with them are nothing new in Europe, where they perhaps have the longest tradition. Coxcombs were known in French cuisine a few centuries ago as a luxury ingredient, often together with, for example, truffles and morels or they were used as garnishes. They are also not a novelty in Italy, where they are part of sauce called cibreo, in which they are mixed with chicken livers and eggs. They are popular in Spain too, where you can find them even canned. You can grill them like other parts of chicken, but the most common preparation technique is braising, usually in chicken stock until tender, when their consistency is similar to gummy bears. After preparation, they lose their bright red color and become grayish. Their outer skin is peeled and now they can be added to a sauce or stew. What about the taste? Well, it's all about its gelatinous, rubbery texture. For some, it's a crispy delicacy. For others, it's like chewing a tongue. Another level of coxcomb cuisine are candied coxcombs, served with vanilla rice pudding and cherries. And it's a gummy bear texture that inspired Chris Cosentino to prepare this dessert in 2007. These warm pseudo gummy bears, by taking the intense red color of the cherries, look like taken just out of bird's head. Would you try this dish? Or are you chicken? 9. Century eggs. So called century eggs are a Chinese delicacy of duck, chicken, or quail eggs soaked in a solution of salt, lime, and other additions, and later wrapped in rice husks or plastic for a few weeks. Century eggs, also known as thousand year old eggs, in reality are only a few weeks or months old. Some of them can be called the pine patterned eggs due to their pine branch like patterns on the egg white. Century eggs are not limited to China, they are also known in other countries of East Asia. In Thailand and Laos, a century egg, due to its strong smell, is called, poetically, horse urine egg, although it has nothing to do with horse urine. Century eggs are said to have originated in Hunan, China a few centuries ago. The most popular legend says that a man discovered duck eggs lying in slaked lime. He ate them, enjoyed them, and to improve their flavor, he added some salt. This is how the century egg came to life. It seems that century eggs were created from the need to preserve the eggs for lean times. For this reason, they were coated in alkaline clay, clay hardened around the egg and saved it from spoiling. This method of producing century eggs was later improved. Apart from clay, other ingredients were added like salt, wood ash and quicklime, so the mixture had higher alkaline pH and the process was much quicker. Ingredients were mixed into a paste which was used to cover the eggs. After a few weeks, eggs covered with now dried crust are ready to eat. Although traditional method of preparing century eggs has not been abandoned, modern method is now widely used. It's just the simpler method of putting eggs into a mixture of salt, slaked lime and sodium carbonate for a week or more and later leaving them wrapped in plastic for a few weeks. After this time, you just peel and wash them. Voila! The process of preserving eggs makes the yolk become dark green and creamy. And ammonia and hydrogen sulfide are responsible for its intense smell and flavor. Egg white turns into salty dark jelly. The smell and flavor of a century egg resemble mm, strong cheese with a scent of ammonia. Century eggs are easily available in East Asia where they appear in various forms. They may be eaten individually, only peeled, as an appetizer or can be sliced and added to an omelette made with regular eggs or be a part of congee. These are just a few uses. You can buy ready-to-eat century eggs in local Asian stores. You just have to wash them as they are covered in clay and rice husks. Unfortunately, the scandal from a few years back showed that some manufacturers, in order to speed up the process, started adding toxic chemicals like copper sulfate contaminated with lead and arsenic. 
After the scandal, some companies started to label their products as lead free. A. Surströmming. Surströmming is a fermented herring, a traditional Swedish smelly delicacy made with stroming, which is the Swedish name for the Baltic Sea herring. Fermented herring has been present in Swedish cuisine for at least five centuries. In the past, fermenting was a valued preservation method as it allowed to have fish supply for the whole year which was needed when the waters for a great part of the year were covered with ice. The herring are caught in spring just before spawning. They are put in strong brine for about a day or so which helps draw out the blood. Then they are put in new brine in the barrels before being canned so only salt prevents fish from rotting. Through the fermentation process, which lasts for a few months, the herring acquired a strong odor. The fermentation is initiated by a lactic acid enzyme present in the herring's spine. The fermentation process is still active in a can, which will bulge, and in this case it's natural compared to non-fermented canned foods where bulging could be a sign of, for example, botulism. During the fermentation, the herring break down and the bacteria and many bad smelling acids are formed, responsible for the sour taste of stroming. It is, for instance, hydrogen sulfide, which smells like rotten eggs. No wonder that according to one Japanese study, the smell of stroming is one of the most putrid food smells that exist. The sour and salty Swedish specialty is enjoyed by some people, but it's not actually taste by aforementioned strong smell which proves why it's just for connoisseurs. Smell is also the reason why a can of stroming should be open outside and or underwater to prevent a splash of the smelly fish. There are two canned versions of stroming. One is fillets and the other one is ungutted fish. Stroming is often served with flatbread called tunbrud with potatoes and red onions that form a stroming sandwich. Sour cream can be added too. And some drink to it, like snaps or beer sometimes, even milk. Every year, on the third Thursday in August, Swedes celebrate the beginning of the season for stroming. In 2006, some of the major airlines banned the stroming from being taken on an airplane because of the explosive potential of the pressurized cans. Worth noting is that surströming, for the fact it's prepared from the Baltic Sea herring, contains higher levels of PCBs and dioxins than the European Union allows. But for now, Sweden is given exception in that matter. 7. Stinkheads Stinkheads, also known as tepa, are fermented salmon heads. This is the legacy of Alaskan natives Yupik people. Traditionally, the heads and guts of salmon Often king salmon are buried in the ground in wooden barrels covered with burlap and are left there to ferment for one to two weeks depending on the temperature. With time, wooden barrels were changed for more comfortable plastic buckets, even plastic bags. However, modern plastic containers increase the risk of botulism, so Alaskan natives soon returned to the safer, traditional fermentation method, which allowed oxygen to circulate, preventing botulism. After the mentioned time of one to two weeks, the heads are ready to be consumed. Bon appétit! Well, the fans of stinkheads are mainly older Yupik people. According to one native, stinkheads are for them like candy or bubblegum, sweet and sour. An average person that tried it doesn't want to go back to this taste of ammonia and rotten fish. 6. Agudag Agudak, also called Eskimo ice cream, is another Alaskan unique delicacy that has nothing to do with typical ice cream. Traditional agudak is made of animal back fat or fish, seal oil and either berries or some roots. All is mixed together until it gets fluffy. It used to be whipped by hand. The recipes for agudak vary depending on the accessibility of the ingredients. It's usually moose, musk, ox, bear or caribou fat, Fish is often freshwater whitefish. Berries include lingon berries, cranberries, crowberries, salmon berries, and other berries. Surprising ingredient may also be fresh snow. Now there are modern additions like vegetable shortening and sugar. Agudak in an Inupiaq language means to stir, mix together. It has been known by Alaskan native for centuries. It was created for practical reasons, so the hunters could take it with them as high-calorie food. Agudak is enjoyed by both natives and tourists, although the taste depends much on the used ingredients. However, it is said that, for example, in fish agudak, you won't find much of fish flavor. 
if the fish was prepared properly. But agudak is definitely fatter than the common ice cream. Perhaps now traditional agudak is not as available as it used to be, but the Alaskan Native Medical Center actually has agudak on its menu. 5. Caterpillar fungus Caterpillar fungus grows on insects. It infects one specific insect, larvae of ghost moths, the ghost moth caterpillar. This fungus is mostly found in the meadows above 3500 meters, which is 11,500 feet in Tibet and other Himalaya regions of Bhutan and Nepal, also in northern part of India. Caterpillar fungus has a long history in traditional Chinese and Tibetan medicine, being first mentioned by the Tibetan doctor in a document from the 15th century. In Tibetan, this fungus is called Yartsagumbu, which can be translated as summer grass winter worm, but of course it's neither grass nor worm. During late summer, the fungus invades the living underground larva host entering its gut. It grows through the host in the fall and winter, slowly kills it and finally mummifies its body. It forms the dark brown stalk-like fruiting body from the head of the dead caterpillar. It emerges from the soil in early spring. Each spring harvester spent four weeks looking for the fungus. It's hand collected as the whole, dead larva and fungus. In rural Tibet, the caterpillar fungus is the most important source of cash income. Prices of fungus have skyrocketed since the late 1990s. If you think that black truffles are insanely expensive, you may be surprised to learn that fungus can reach the price of 20,000 US dollars per one kilogram, which is more than two pounds. And the top quality yardsa can be sold for twice as much or even more. In 2012, in rural North India, a single fungus was worth about three dollars. However, due to over harvesting, the fungus is now listed as an endangered species in China. Caterpillar fungus is mildly sweet, but generally it's flavorless, so you can use it to whatever dish you want. It can be added to soups, mostly chicken soups, or in a powdered form to a cocktail. Tea can also be made with the fungus, no matter where it's added. It's valued by the Chinese traditional medicine as a remedy for almost all the diseases you can imagine, cancer included. However, no matter how healthy it's said to be, it contains high level of arsenic, but its price, it's probably enough not to overuse the fungus. 4. Tiet Can Tiet Can is raw blood pudding popular in northern Vietnam. This traditional Vietnamese dish is prepared with fresh animal blood, usually of ducks or pigs, that is mixed with some fish sauce to prevent it from coagulating too quickly. Meat and innards of duck or pork are cooked as an addition to the pudding. The broth that is left from cooking meat is later used to dilute the mixture of blood and fish sauce to help blood coagulate. Then it is all poured to earlier prepared cooked meat. When the blood coagulates, it turns into ready-to-eat gelatinous pudding. It can be topped with chopped peanuts, mint and Vietnamese coriander. Raw blood pudding is eaten cool and if it's not eaten right away, it's kept in a refrigerator so the blood can stay coagulated. At room temperature, the blood will turn to liquid. This pudding is often prepared on special occasions. However, it is commonly served for breakfast. So how does such raw blood pudding taste? Those who love it say it's sour and buttery and really enjoy its gelatinous texture. Others mention a metallic taste. There is some risk of consuming raw blood as it may contain dangerous bacteria. Raw pig's blood may be infected by swine bacteria like Streptococcus. In humans, it could result in multiple organ failure, leading to death, and there are reports of people who died after eating raw blood pudding. 3. Yin Yang Fish Yin Yang Fish, also known as dead and alive fish, is a much criticized dish because the whole fish, mainly carp, after being scaled and gutted, is being fried, excluding its head, which stays alive. Carp is being held by the mouth while its lower part is dipped in hot oil. Once its body is cooked, the still live fish is covered in sauce and served on a plate while its mouth and eyes are still moving, especially when treated with sauce. This scary dish was invented by some restaurant owner in Taiwan. However, it doesn't mean that it's very popular. Well, such preparation of fish can be found throughout China and some people value the dish for its freshness, but even many Chinese people wouldn't try it. Would you really eat the poor fish whose eyes are staring at you while you're eating it? 2. Kiviak 
Kiviak is a traditional Inuit dish from the north of Greenland eaten during the winter period. It is made of seabirds called little oaks fermented in a seal skin. 300 to 500 dead whole oaks caught during spring are packed tightly into a dead seal, whose meat was thrown away but fat remained. Then, air is removed from the inside, the skin of seal is sewn up and sealed with seal fat which works as a fly repellent. Rocks are put on top so the gases can be released during the fermentation process. The sealed birds are left to ferment for at least 3 months, sometimes even a year. After fermentation, kiviak is ready to be served. Inuit families in Greenland originally made kiviak to ensure there was enough food during dark and harsh arctic winters. Nowadays, it's often served on special occasions. The meat of little ox is eaten raw with feathers removed. During the fermentation process, the bird's meat becomes tenderized from the seal fat, so even the bones become soft enough to eat them. You can also bite off the bird's head and suck out the juices. Usually eaten outside, strong-smelling sticky meat is greatly valued by the natives who treat the heart as the best part. And the taste is compared to very mature cheese. In 2013, some people died from eating kiviak made from either instead of oak. Either got them botulism as it doesn't ferment as well as oak. Before we go any further, we must warn you that number one is quite disturbing. 1. Baby mouse wine. This is exactly what the name suggests. The wine that contains baby mice. With their eyes still closed, these baby mice are taken just after being born to be used as a rice wine ingredient. They cannot be older than 3 days and they are just dropped while still alive into the bottle of wine. Such wine is left to ferment for a year or so. Baby mouse wine can be found in southern China, Guangdong province, but even there it doesn't seem to be that common. Although it is called wine, baby mice can be soaked in much stronger Chinese alcohol, like for example baiju, so-called white liquor, meaning clear colorless liquor which is often rice-based and is usually stronger than vodka. High alcohol by volume helps kill the germs and the baby mice are said to give the alleged nutritious or medicinal value. And it is these medicinal properties that are the reason why some people in China, usually elders, drink this beverage, possibly known there for centuries. It is said to help cure many diseases, for example asthma and generally to revitalize the body. It is hard to find opinions on how this drink tastes, but one of them says it tastes like mm, gasoline. And yes, the mice aren't there just for show. The alcohol can be consumed together with the whole content, with soft little mice. So, the baby mouse wine is supposed to be rather a health tonic, but hey, aren't there any other maybe herbal health tonics to drink? That was part 2 of 10 strange foods you can eat depending on where you are. But if you are still hungry for more, subscribe, because other parts of this series are coming soon.